Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Compelling Conversations podcast. Today, I have an amazing guy with me. Another amazing guy. I mean, there's just so many amazing guys. Muhammad Isiaka. Dude, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me, man. Thank you. It's, a, yeah. it's, a, it's an honor to be here. Dude, this one, you're perhaps like one of like the first, like, yeah, you're probably one of the first few guys I ever hit up. Like, yo, you want to be on my podcast? So this one has been in the oven for a while. Now yeah. it's, it's cooked out. So I'm glad we made it. <laughs> yeah, well, it, it's been, we've been planning this for a while and I'm excited to be here. It's Alhamdulillah. I'm yeah you know it's it's crazy that i literally met you like in april it's it's wild it's just but that connection it's just such it's been so deep and it's just mm-hmm. kept us going as friends huh yes it really has i mean we met at like showdown in dallas yeah. and i remember like i still remember like the impression you had on me like to, i went home to my brother like from from the hotel i went to the hotel I was talking to my brother, like, I just talked to this amazing dude, like, the questions and everything, like, I wasn't expecting it, man. I, like, bet on my soul to this guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it was a really good conversation. I like that one. That was a yeah, deep I one. Did. I did. Yeah. I did. So, you man. have, um, you honestly, you have, like, a likability about you. Like, just, you know, like, some people, you meet them and just, like, in their, in their presence, you just feel like, yeah, I like that guy's charisma. I like that enthusiasm, that sincerity. Where do you think that likability comes for you? Likeability. Uh, to be honest, I don't know. <laughs> um, I kind of like, I guess through my years in college, I kind of like noticed that trait, that quality. Um, when I like, like would meet different people and like they would have like good things to say about me. And I'm like, oh, huh. that's when I knew like I had like a gift or something. I was like, okay, I guess <laughs> this, is, <laughs> this is something I can yeah. do you know, to my power and something I'm trying to use also, like, you know, moving forward in the future. Um, but it's just based on my experience that I noticed that quality. I do not know where I got it from. I'm thinking maybe from my brother, Yasir, because he also has that kind of quality, you know. He does, he yeah. Us, and we grew up together. And so, like, I spent a lot of time with him, like, so probably just, like, got some of that quality, too. Yeah. That. Yeah. That's cool. I always find it interesting, the name Muhammad, it means, you know, praiseworthy. It's cool mm. stuff. Yeah. yeah, like like my name is, my first name is also Muhammad, but I never, like I always go by Omar, you know? And I never really think, what does that name mean, Muhammad? And it's, it's yeah. cool. And so you have that name and like, it's it's cool. Like you have that vibe about you as well, you know? Alhamdulillah, uh, man. <laughs> yeah. So that brings all the praise. <laughs> yeah. Alhamdulillah, They say well, that... Um, yeah, go ahead. Muhammad, is that from like your dad's name? Because your last name is Farid Khan, right? Yeah, my, my first name is Muhammad. Oh, your first name is Muhammad. Yeah. But I mean, oh. I go by Omar anywhere I go. It's just been me since I was a kid, you know? Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They say that um, tomorrow is the day that Moses freed his people from Egypt. And uh, that's that's why you're you're fasting, if I'm not mistaken. Is that right? Yes, the day of Ashura, the eighth day of Ashura, and we're recommended to fast as Muslims. I'm Muslim, and so um, you know the Prophet recommended us to fast on that day. And there are so many benefits because Islam gives us seasons where we can like reap these benefits of like good deeds, you know. And I know like fasting for on the day of Ashura, like the previous sins would be forgiven for the previous year, and so like. I'm like, one day I can do this. Yeah. That's why I'm fasting. Yeah, you know, that's cool. Me too. You know, I'm fasting as well. And it's, um, I like fasting a lot, actually. And I'd written a poem and yeah. And one of the things, well, this year, this year made me realize I like fasting. Yeah. And one of the things I had written was um, about how like fasting just, it it frees a person because it, it demands you to command yourself, you know? So there's this thing that they talk about. It's called the idol of the pig and the idol of the dog. Okay. And so the idol of the pig represents like um, gluttony, like wanting to eat, eat, eat. Mm-hmm. And then the idol of the dog represents anger. 
And when you're yeah. fasting, those are the two principal things that you have to have a command on. And yes. I, I don't remember what scholar it was. Hamza Yusuf mentioned it. I, I don't remember what scholar, unfortunately, but it might have been Al-Ghazali who had basically had this idea. Like you can't mm-hmm. let the pig or the dog go rampant. You as the human being have to be the controller of the two. Kind of like the idea that Plato has with his two horses. But um, that's just something I wanted to mention. I think no, it's no, no, that's really interesting. You know, like the way the fact that you said like fasting commands like you to like control yourself, you know, like that discipline, like to be honest, that's also why I like fasting. Like, you know, just when I fast, I just feel a certain way the effect of the fast and that discipline, I'm able to like apply it, you know, especially after Ramadan, like, I noticed after Ramadan, like my discipline level is just like through the roof. Like I feel like I can do anything, you know, if I set my mind yeah. to it, you know, I'm like clear. And so like after Ramadan, usually it's like my most productive part of the year. Like, you know, I'm still getting that from, from that high of Ramadan. And so I really yeah. like that, you know. No, I, I, I totally agree with that. Um, fasting is in a way a superpower. Mm-hmm. I like to think that. At least, yeah. I'm glad that, but like, so for some people it's hard because obviously, like, you're restricting yourself, you're controlling yourself, and then for some people it's like easy, you know. Like, everyone is on a different scale. Just with like everything with life, you know, you may find some things easy and some things more difficult. Yeah, know? Ustad Mahad, who's an amazing speaker, he came to uh, he came to my masjid a few days ago to give the Juma Khutbah. It was a surprise to see him, pleasant surprise. What masjid? And- uh, Bear Creek. Okay. And what he said was, he was talking about, you know, Moses freeing his people. And what I really, really liked that he mentioned was Moses had like a very positive outlook towards the future mm-hmm. and a positive, you know, view of his Lord. And um, that that plays a big role in how like he was able to lead his people. And so I really, that, that whole positivity mindset, mm-hmm. I think it's a great thing because it truly is one of those few things that if you possess, you can do a lot of things. Would you say the same? Oh, yeah, for sure. Like, it's essential, like, to be optimistic. Um, that's, like, for me, I know where I am. I'm more on the optimistic side. So sometimes I have to be realistic and be like, okay, <laughs> this is not actually going to work out. <laughs> but um, you kind of have to have the optimistic side to be able to like go for things and like, you know, achieve things. And, you know, even like thinking in terms of religion also, like it affects everything, every part of your body and like your actions and how you actually go about doing things. And so like, that's crucial for me also. Um, I try to be optimistic generally. I think that's my default. Um, and so it takes me a long way, like, whatever I'm doing, you know, being optimistic. Because if you're still having a negative mindset of something, like, what's the, what's the drive to be able to, like, achieve? Like, if your end goal is already negative, like, what's, what's driving you to, like, pursue it, you know? It's, it's, you have to have, like, a good end goal in mind and you're setting goals. And, like, being optimistic allows you to, like, move forward in life. I feel. Yeah. And I've been optimistic about God, also about Allah, you know, because um, there's a hadith about like, um, Allah, you are like, your view of Allah is kind of like what you're expected to be. Allah views you the way you view him. Like, you are, I, I yeah, can't, you know, it's, no, no, you're right. Uh, he says that uh, he is to his servant how his servant perceives him to be. Yes, that's yeah. it. That's it. That's yeah. it right there. Yeah, when I heard that, um, that that was a big like moment for me. It's like, wow, like I gotta actually Noman Ali Khan once mentioned this. He says, uh, what is the purpose of your faith if you're not gonna be optimistic? <laughs> and that really hit me. It's like, yeah, what is the purpose of your faith? In what way though? Like how does how did that hit you? Uh what part? What is the purpose of your faith if you're not gonna be optimistic? Like, how does that stand out from like other faiths? Like like you said, like that hit you, like personally. Um, I remember I was like on the way to school, and I was standing at like the the little train station in downtown for the metro. Okay. It was like raining, and I was just listening to that. It was like yeah. the morning time, and I was feeling kind of like rough. 
But um, the reason it hit me was like, I heard Jordan Peterson say this, like, okay, like your life might suck, right? Mm -hmm. it, like things might be going badly, but is it better or worse to have faith in that? You could say, oh, everything sucks. So screw it. I'm going to hell anyways. Why should I believe in any of this? Or is it, okay, everything sucks, but at least I have this hope to cling on to, this faith to cling on to that can help me find some more light. So something along those lines, if that makes oh, sense. Oh, I like that. I like that. Um, like a yeah. thought came to my mind also, like, I guess kind of how I, like, I view Islam also, that plays like a huge part of how I view Islam in terms of like, you know, having like an optimistic um, view of Allah. And that makes me, you know, want to, you know, because there's a hadith about how, like, Allah is even more generous than your mother, you know. And I'm like, dang, I know my mother loves me so much. And if Allah is, like, 100 times, you know, more merciful than my mother, like, I don't have to be worried about a lot. Like, I don't really have to be worried about so much, you know. I just have to try my part and be, you know, honest and, like, you know, sincere in what I do. And that gives yeah. me, like, a really optimistic, like, you know, um, view of Allah, to be honest. No, that's, I really like that. It's, it's an important factor in life, I think. Mm -hmm. One of the splendid things I've been thinking about, about like this faith is that the importance of like months and dates and like histories. And I never really contemplated that before, but it just kind of makes me think because like, um, like there's the day of Arafah and that's like supposed to be like one of the best days ever. It's yeah. like, wow, that's that's interesting. And then you have this one, like Ashura, and it's like also supposed to be one of the best days ever. So it's it's always fascinated me how months and days have such an importance. Like even if, like uh, on Ashura, not only was Moses, you know, saving the Jews, also this is like the day that Hussein was martyred. And if I'm not mistaken, this one I'm not sure about, but I think it's also the day that Adam and Eve like came to, to earth. Oh, so. That one I'm not sure about, but the other okay. one I am. But the point I'm making is like this significance of days and months. I never really contemplated that in the faith, but mm. it really hits me hard. And the reason it hits me hard is because, like, let me ask you this question. Have okay. you ever felt like you possessed a day? In terms of what I possessed a day, like I own this day. Yeah. Like, in like terms I of own day, that day. I, that was like it's gonna go according to my plans like everything like i guess so i guess so it's, it's a little vague because i just thought about it but something like that yeah have you ever okay. felt like that i mean i would say yeah you know like i like to plan things and so like i wake up some days like knowing like how exactly like i want to leave that day you know and i try to stick to that plan so yeah to some extent i try and like i feel like i own days yeah. yeah, that's really cool. And the reason this question was inspired in me is because, um, you know, when we're praying the Surah Fatiha, like God, mm -hmm. like we say, like, you know, oh, Allah, you are like the owner of the day of judgment. And it's just mm -hmm. like that one statement is a fascinating statement because I, mm -hmm. I was thinking like for myself, have I ever owned a day? Because there's so many like maybe like subjectively like, yeah, I have. But. There's so yeah. many human beings, not only now, but like mm. throughout history. And it's like, who's to say Napoleon was like, yeah, I own that day you uh, know, or something like that. And it's like, but there's so many humans and we can all think we own the day, right? In our own subjective ways. But then there's God and he's like, I am the owner of the day of judgment when all of history stands together. So it just really fascinates me that function of dates and months and all that. Yeah. Okay. I see what you're saying in terms of like, because like we all like trying to like, plan out our days, but in the event in the end, there are so many variables and so many factors that like you know mess up with those plans, you know. And like I think there's a verse in the Quran, like we plan but Allah is the best of planners, you know. Yeah, I think yeah. We own the day, but like you know, in the end, Allah owns everything, you know, and like Allah knows what's gonna happen, you know, in terms of the logistics of our day. Um, yeah. Then you were talking about like you know the significance of like days and months and you know i think it's because throughout the year you know like 
days kind of like blend out to be the same in general. Like they all seem like you know, they can all mesh up and they are doing the same thing repeatedly. Yeah. But then when you have like this period of like, oh, okay, this is an important day, kind of like inspires you to like, okay, I need to like do more doing this. Day. Yeah. So you take change from the norm, you know, and you're like, okay, this day comes like once a year. You know, if I miss it like after with another year, like I might as well like ramp up and like try and do my best just for the you know for this day or for these two days. And like the yeah. 10 days, um, the best 10 days of the year, days of I think the hijab, you know, like it's 10 days in the entire year, 10 days out of 365 days, you know. I'm like, I can't just let this day go, like go by. I have to like try and take advantage of it, you know, because it's not gonna come soon. I don't know how long I'm gonna live to like experience this, you know. Yeah. It's like that form of fear of missing out also plays a factor too into like yeah. thinking about important like seasons you know that we have yeah this is what i really like about you like the way you just expressed all that it's like you could kind of just see like that honesty just kind of like beaming it's just the way you express yourself it's like yeah like i i want to take advantage of that you know and it's like yeah. i don't know i i really can't articulate it but i really mean it when i say you have like this essence when you're expressing yourself it's cool alhamdulillah man alhamdulillah just attribute this all to allah thank yeah. you man that's nice yeah but like you also have like ma- masha like amazing personality like you're able to connect with people on like a certain level like I think about that and it's one of the skills I actually want to possess one day you know being able to like talk to people and like get to know them deep down you know because I I find people curious like interesting and I think about like psychologists and I'm like that's like an interesting job they're able to like talk but it takes them weeks and months and years before they're able to like uncover those layers you know but like. You kind of have a gift being able to ask certain questions and like you know kind of poke deeper like the essence of the person um which i like you know? thank you yeah i mean as you said you know alhamdulillah they appreciate <laughs> that. that's good man. yeah yeah um, but um i don't know i came into this like kind of like oh I don't know what to expect in terms of like this interview. This is going to be like an interview where like a bunch of questions I just answer. Or That's the interesting like thing. Like there, there are no questions, you know. It, really? <laughs> I just record what's what's interesting to me. Oh, okay. Or I, okay. I write down what's interesting to me. But, okay. Um, yeah, no, like the, the purpose of the podcast is just like a candid conversation. Okay. And, um, okay. Yeah, like it's it's always a great conversation with you. So there's okay, never an cool. awkward moment with me, right? So yeah. If there is okay, anything that, like that. Yeah. You don't okay, have to. That's why like I kept on waiting. I was like waiting. For, like, is he going to ask me another question? Like, should I just like keep on waiting? Yeah. <laughs> but it's yeah. just a conversation. So it's like back and forth. And we just like keep it going that way. Okay. Yeah. I guess yeah. I'll share something interesting. I, I read in a book yesterday. Yeah. Um, there's this guy. Uh, they call him like Hoja Nasruddin. He was okay. like a um, like a, a Sufi saint, I suppose. And uh, they, he, there's a lot of interesting literature on him, but okay. he's supposed to be like a funny guy, right? Yeah. And so one of the stories is like Nasr Din, he's like so hyped up because he wants to buy a shirt. So he saves up some money for it. And then he goes to the tailor and the tailor's like, okay, come back next week. And if Allah wills it, it'll be ready. So Nasr Din, he contains his excitement for a week and then yeah. he comes back. And then the tailor says, uh, okay, there's been a delay. Um, come back tomorrow, and if Allah wills it, it'll be ready. So then okay. Nasir Din's like, okay. And so he, he comes back the next day, and the tailor's like, uh, unfortunately, um, something came up. Um, it'll be ready tomorrow if Allah wills it. So Nasir Din goes, okay, can you please tell me when it will be ready if you leave Allah out of it? And it, <laughs> that was just so funny to me because I could relate to that on a personal <laughs> level where it's like, I'll get this done, inshallah. But it's like that inshallah is like, it might not be 100% sincere. It might be like, uh, yeah, just I'll, I'll get it done kind of a thing. Could you relate to that? Like, or oh, what do you I think of that story? That a lot. Like, um, I relate to that a lot. Because growing up, my mom would always like say inshallah. And it would get on my nerves sometimes. Because <laughs> I'll be like, mom, I'll, I'll, you know, I don't know, I want this like toy or I want this like, gadget and she's like inshallah inshallah you get it <laughs> i'm like what does that mean like <laughs> and then you know you're not getting it right i'm not getting it you know <laughs> i don't get it most times like night like a huge percentage of the time i don't get it you know and she's like yeah. she gives says like this inshallah I'm like 
uh, I don't think you're supposed to use inshallah like that. That's not sincere, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and so like they're marketing like the sincerity from like just like saying inshallah, you know. I actually being sincere and like living up to Allah and like trying your best, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I shared this story with my mom. I'm sorry, was I cutting you off? No, 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 no. I was done. Yeah. Oh my bad. Okay. Um, I shared this story with my mom. Yeah. And she laughed too. And she's like, you know, it's it's funny, like well, it's not funny exactly, but like Muslims, they unfortunately they they specifically use inshallah to like cover up the no, like just brush mm-hmm. it under the rugs, you know? Yeah. Like that's that's just that's what it it shouldn't be like that. It shouldn't be like that, but it's it, we say it's just like because it's like a little kid, like inshallah, so that you can just leave it for the time being, you can have your like yeah. peace, you know, like just inshallah, you know. <laughs> yeah, okay. It gets like optimistic. Oh, yeah, I'm gonna get it, and he forgets about it, you know, because we forget things you know, as human beings. Um, now something you mentioned um from one of your podcasts, you know. Um, I, I don't remember who you were talking to, but like about like people working and how like there are different categories of people working, you know. I don't think I finished that episode, to be honest, but which is why I'm like, <laughs> asking you about it. <laughs> no, that's cool. I really appreciate you watching them, though. I, no, I, I watched I really, them, but like, yeah. I, I feel like I need to digest the podcast because there's so much yeah. information. And like, I need to like, contemplate about it. And so like, I watched it in parts and bits. And like, yeah, 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 for sure. I just watch everything at once. You know, I forget about it. But sometimes, like, some things, like, you know, hits me and I'm like, oh, man, I have to think about this. <laughs> yeah, no, but, I, yeah, I expect like, that. But yeah, I'm back to it. You're like, um, there are different kinds of people. Like, there are people who like work and like they just work in because, like, you know, that's what they have to do. And you just have to get by. And there are people that work because, like, it's never even work to them. Like, that's their passion, you know. Like, that's something like that. Like, they enjoy doing it, and it's so like interesting to them. And I found that interesting, you know. I found that really interesting because, like, in terms of working, like, if you're going to be working for like years of your life, fifty years, forty years. You know, Allah Alam God knows how many years. And like, how does that change over time? You know, that's what I was thinking about. Like, you start off doing something you're passionate about and then it just dies down when you have like family and kids and responsibilities and it just becomes like, oh, this is something I have to do. Or like, do you, how do you maintain, like, you just keep on working as like a passion and something you keep on doing. Basically, that newness, that like, you know, excitement in life. Like, how do you maintain that, you know? It's just like questions I was thinking about. Not necessarily for you to answer, but like putting them out there, you know, that I think about in life. Well, what is that for you, though? I'm curious because, you know, um, what, what, uh, yeah, what is that for you? I mean, for me, I'm like in the early stages of like my career. And so like I'm thinking about those things like, you know, if I'm going to be doing this. Like I'm trying to like do something I'm passionate about and I'm something I can keep on doing. Like I see myself being years from now. Well, I, what is that for you? Oh, like in terms of like actual work? Oh. Well, I mean, like anything. What is it exactly that you're passionate about? What is it I'm passionate about? So like one thing for me I know about myself is I like people. I like interacting with people. Um, I like being around people and collaborating with people. I like putting things together, organizing like events, you know, and um, just like giving joy to people, to be honest. Um, it would be something simple, but something that I get to like see the word of one thing, the, the you know, the outcome of one thing and the impact of what I'm doing in the lives of people. That's something like that drives me, you know. I've witnessed that, you know, like when I came to that carnival that you invited oh, me to, yeah. um, you, I saw you, you know, you were working relentlessly to like serve the people. That was brilliant stuff. It was like, yeah. yeah. Appreciate you uh, giving me that free boba. Kind of <laughs> the free snow cone, was it boba? <laughs> yeah. I don't remember. I bent it into like one. <laughs> yeah, that was a good time, man. Yeah, it was yeah. a good time. Those kids were like, I, like, I actually like kids. I love working with kids because you get to see like their personalities and like, you know, how like kind of like small images of their parents, you know, because I was mm. like, the two kids that came up and they were like, they came up with this like attitude and I was like, they're like five years old. <laughs> you're like, how do you have this, you know, like, how is this yeah. possible? So young, you know, like, oh, I want to buy boba, like, it came in so demanding, I'm like, oh, wow. Ah. And the funny thing, I didn't just notice it, like, the person next to me noticed that also, so I was like, ah. so we both saw this, right, like, <laughs> this tiny kid that, like, you know, that, that was kind of interesting, you know, seeing, like, the different personalities, like, of people, like, I find that very interesting, you know. You know, I find that interesting, too. Yeah. 
I don't know, like maybe like a, like become a psychologist or something, you know, just like knowing more about people and like, you know, how like they're formed and everything, what influences them. Yeah. Kind of you have good interpersonal skills, like from what I've seen you do. So I wouldn't be surprised. It's good stuff. Yeah. Oh, also like you, you, you're going down like the, well, I remember when I first talked to you, there are two things you said that like, kind of confused me or like, I was like, huh, you know, like you said you wanted to become a, you were going down, going down the pre-med path. I think you wanted to become a psychologist or something, right? Psychiatrist, yeah. Psychiatrist. But then you said you wanted to create like an ice cream, <laughs> the best ice cream <laughs> business. And I was like, huh. <laughs> So like that, oh that was like that like stopped me. I was like, oh, interesting. <laughs> I, no, I it's so like, funny you mentioned that. <laughs> Go ahead. I couldn't like understand it at the moment. I was like, I'm very confused. Like, which one? <laughs> yeah. I found that very interesting. It's like I feel like you were trying to pursue. Like the way I'm interpreting that is like you're trying to pursue your passion in terms of like that was like the ice cream, and then the the psychiatrist was like a long term <laughs> goal <laughs> of what you're trying to achieve. <laughs> Oh man, it's so funny you bring that up. And exciting and like, okay, this is something I can do now, you know, something I can go for. That's that's kind of how I interpreted it, you know. Yeah. I I, I came up with that story um okay. when I was like 18. And it yeah. was basically like because I it was just for fun, but it was also like when I would talk to people, they would say things that were boring to me, like, oh yeah, man, I'm just mm. trying to be an economist and I want to be like, you know, like a data analyst. And it just like, they were so dead when they were speaking. And this was like so many people. And so like, for me, I was like, well, if somebody asked me, I want to give them something exciting. Mm -hmm. So the story I tell them for the viewers who don't know is like, uh, people would ask me like, Hey, like, uh, so what are you trying to do? And I'd be like, uh, so do you know who Salt Bay is? And they'd be like, Salt Bay. Yeah, I know who Salt Bay is. I'm like, all right. I went to his restaurant in Turkey. Yeah, and it was the best meat I've ever had in my <laughs> life, and I thought, if this man yeah. can do what he did with his passion for meat, what if I could do that with my passion for ice cream? Yes. If he could put, if he could sprinkle salt on meat, what if I could sprinkle sprinkles on ice cream and become Sprinkle Bay? So anytime people hear that, they like, like they either like try to contain their laughter or they burst out <laughs> laughing. And yeah. it's just something so novel for them. Like they just, they've never heard of something like that. Yeah. But um, I'd say like, it was made up as a story in the beginning, but I wouldn't be surprised if like somehow I like ended up trying to pursue that on the side. Yeah. yeah. Because like the essence of like that story, like as you said, is like you ask people, like they give you this like generic, like no one grows up like, oh, I want to become like an engineer. Like they don't exactly know what they want to become. You know, you actually don't even know what that means, you know. Mm-hmm. You kind of know, like, you don't really know what that means, you know. And so, like, the essence of that question is to, like, discover, like, why? Like, what's the reasoning? Like, what's the passion behind that? Like, why do you think this would be a good fit for you, you know? Like, basically, what's your interest and what are you passionate about? And that's why I like that story, you know. It's like, huh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate like, you pointing it out. I, I forgot but, I even mentioned it to you, if I'm being <laughs> honest. Yeah. No, I I said that like it's smart to like like a layer without asking it directly, like, oh, so what are your interests? It's kind of like, okay, this is my interest, and this is something I feel like I'm passionate about. And so like I kind of saw it as like a hint, like, okay, so why are you really interested in it? Why like what do you why are you passionate about in life? You know, that's how I yeah. saw the meaning behind that question. And what is that for you? I, I never let you finish. I'm sorry. But what is oh, that I'm, thing that you're passionate about? I'm still discovering it, trying to see how I can like do that. You know, as I said, like helping people and working with people. And so I'm trying to figure out how I can do that like in my life, in my current role, in my free time, you know. And so I'm still trying to figure it out because I know I'll, I would be happy in certain jobs, like teaching, you know, working around kids. Like I know that's something I can do, working around people. So that's something I'm trying to lean towards more. Um, and that could come in various forms, you know, in different roles, in different jobs, you know. It's not all boiled down to, like, this certain job, this is what I'm, like, destined to be, I was, like, made to be, you know. It could mean several things, but applying those skills in those jobs or those roles, you know, that's what I see, you know. Kind of like the whole, like, concept of, like, soulmates and, like, you know, love and everything. 
I don't necessarily feel like you have one soulmate. You have several people you can connect with and you can like grow with, you know, because there are so many personalities in, in this world. And like, there are so many people you're going to connect with on different levels. And so it doesn't necessarily mean that there's just one person that's like out of the billions of people in this world that's just for you, just one person. Like, I don't, I don't think that's, that's the case, you know. Uh, like, even the probability doing the math and the statistics, like, <laughs> it's not gonna add up <laughs> you know yeah and that's the same thing i see like life with like jobs and like you know interest and passion and like you know various you know yeah no excellently articulated charles bukowski had said something similar where he's like i don't remember exactly but it's something to the the effect of you know there are millions of people out there and you could love someone right now Mm -hmm. But there's like hundreds of others that you could love even more, but you just wouldn't know it because they're somewhere else, you know, and never cross paths. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It reminds me of like that FOMO. FOMO keeps on coming to my mind, fear of missing out. Um, uh, I don't know why I, I think about that a lot, you know. <laughs> it's like there are so many, it's like the whole concept of like alternate dimensions and realities and, you know, the possibilities, you know. Mm. It's, it's infinite, you know, you can like, and it can get stumped. It gives you like that, like, yeah. you know, um, paralysis of decision when you have so many, you know, you know, if you do this and you know, if you do take this path or this other path, like there's so many outcomes to that, you know. Yeah. And this is very interesting you mentioned because uh, Muhammad Farah, he mentioned something similar to me as well, where it's like in today's day and age, like this whole multiverse concept is like kind of spiraling out. And mm -hmm. it's like, it's making people think like less about their lives in the sense mm -hmm. of like nihilism. Like, oh, well, there's a multiverse. Maybe there is, I don't know. But it's like, you know, that that idea of like, what even does it matter kind of a thing. Yeah. It's interesting you mentioned that, all these different. Yeah. Like, when you're saying that, it's like, and that's probably, Allah, Allah, Allah knows best, but, you know, in the Quran, like, Allah didn't go into so much detail in terms of like other worlds and like aliens or like, you know, Allah just gave us what we need to know because like, when you start going to like that spiral, like those details, like it's, it could be infinite, you know, like you just yeah. keep on going on and on. It's like, it's like a ball that never ends or like a path that never ends, you know, and it's, it's kind of interesting, you know. Yeah. So, we're, we're only capable of like dealing with certain things, you know, in front of us. You know? Going back, this reminded me, going back to that thing about the, about how Allah is the owner of the day of judgment. Mm -hmm. One of the, the speakers I was listening to, Omar Farouk Abdullah, he said that um, when on that day when like all beings are gathered and yeah. all their histories are gathered, he's like, think about like the jinns that will be gathered too, because they were here before Adam and mm -hmm. they had their own kingdoms mm -hmm. and wars and histories. Mm -hmm. And so this whole idea, you know, multiverse, realities, all that, it's like, wow, like it really just goes on. You never really know. So yes, saying. like the the in Surah Al Fatiha, as you mentioned at the beginning, like Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alamin, all praise is due to Allah, the Lord of all the worlds. You know, that's yeah. what, like that's one of the translations. And all the worlds, like, what does that mean? There's so many worlds, you know, that's the human world that we know of, Earth, you know, that's the jinn world that we don't know too much about. You know, that could be various other worlds that we don't even know, you know. And that's just insane to think about, you know, like when I think about like aliens and like, you know. Out of space, it's like it's <laughs> infinite, you know. <laughs> it's like yeah. mind-boggling. Um, so it just shows you like the power of Allah, like the magnitude, you know. Allah, Allah, you know? Yeah, I know, hundred percent. It's been an awesome conversation, Muhammad. Yes. Do you have any closing <laughs> thoughts? Anything you you wanted to say? You felt like you didn't get a chance to, or something you wanted uh, to express? You want us to know? Like I really enjoyed this conversation. It was relaxing. It came here a bit tense, but like. You know, if you said it was going to be a conversation, I was like, oh, I didn't necessarily believe you at first, but then you know, just like too much relaxed, like having a conversation with you casually, like something I feel like I can do outside of the camera, you know, even without the camera. It's just one on one, two guys talking, you know. Uh, I had a good time, you know. So you know, nice. likewise. And I'm so glad this happened because, you know, me and you, we always have a wonderful conversation. And I'm glad yes. we got to capture one because it's mm -hmm. like a testament to our time and reality. You know, yes, and I, I got friendship like it's crazy. We started like April, you know, but like like I've known you for a while, a long while now. Yeah, it's just how many months, you know. Not even four. 
Not two even. Four, really? Not even. Yeah, insane. Wow. <laughs> insane. Yeah, that's insane. That's insane. <laughs> I'm glad, man. Yeah. Hopefully, we can keep on this, keep this brotherhood, and you know, continue to grow in our friendship. Yeah, inshallah, for sure. Um, but thanks so much, Muhammad, for being here. And um, oh, I suppose until next time, right? Until next time. <laughs> All right. Well, you take care, uh, my friend. Take care of yourself, man. Yeah. Assalamualaikum. And uh, oh, I also wanted to commend you, yeah, man. Like, um, like, like the Eid um, get together, you know, that you had. Mm. Um, mashallah, like, to be honest, that was like one of my first Eid parties. And like, you just building like that brotherhood, bringing a bunch of guys you met at like different places. Like bringing us all in together in one room, like that was amazing. Like, let me just say, you know, I don't Thank see that you. often, and uh, like that's that's interesting. I've been able to like you know bring us all together, like you know, kind of like connect us together. You know, we can build like friendship. Like, if I see these guys again, like I already know who they are, and like I can like yeah. you know, relate to them. I think that's interesting. Yeah. yeah. No, thanks for mentioning that. I I really enjoyed having you over. It was such a good time with all the guys. Thank you, man. No, it's just fun. It's fun. Yeah. 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 You have anything else? <laughs> I don't, but I did want to say to you, um, uh, I hope you, you enjoy breaking your fast. Oh, thank you. No, you sound like you want to, you want to say something else. <laughs> Was I going to say something else? I don't know. You're um, thinking. To be honest, no, but I guess I will close with something that Rumi once said. Okay. He said, um, don't curse the darkness, light a candle. So the idea darkness. is that you might be like, you know, in a rough spot, but don't curse the circumstance. Just light a candle, do what you can to kind of fix that, so to speak. Take action. Mm, I like that. It's like the same, like you, you don't know you're in the good days until they're over. You know, like you don't, yeah. you don't, I appreciate the good days until they're over and it's just like even in the darkness you know that's a you know you kind of have to appreciate it as you go through it appreciate like whatever you you know you're dealing with you know yeah and don't curse it you know like struggle with it then it's going to be a struggle but then it's going to be over and that's just part of like you growing and you know welcome it you know welcome the challenge that's how i like i'm saying that but yeah yeah it's, yeah well i'm uh, yeah but um yeah my dude thanks again so much for being here i'm honored to have you thank you man and, uh, thank you you take care then yeah you too man. you too break your fast and take care of yourself say hi to your dad for me and your brother yeah for sure all right well so i'm like